Um, I just want to, I just want to ask, I know we, I know we've got a few more questions for you, but how difficult was it trying to balance out not only getting all of the information from all of the players and, and how contrasting that's got to be at times, uh, sometimes polar opposite accounts of, of individual character or experiences. Um, how difficult was it trying to be fair when it comes to, cause I mean, obviously you've got four hours of, of film time total between these two parts, but I'm sure you had to hash out probably eight times that in actual interview. I imagine I could be wrong. Um, but how difficult was it to, to really tell these stories from a director's standpoint, because you, you want to include all the information, but time constraint wise, you can't, um, so I guess I guess it's a two part question. How much filming did you guys do and how hard was it trying to figure out how to to accurately portray the stories, no matter how difficult it was to hear different contrasts? Damn, what the hell did I write 11 questions for? That was the best question of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. We did over 100 hours. In an Holy hour. shit. <laughs> OK, I was being yeah. optimistic with uh, <laughs> eight. <laughs> like eight or 12 Plus times holy crap yeah tom osborne went four hours alone you know um mm -hmm. some of the guys you know ron brown he went you know four hours we had a couple guys that went you know the shortest anybody would go is probably an hour and so and then plus the round tables which which were long but um mm -hmm. it was it so the goal was okay it's it's their story so the the goal was just try to capture everything that went on, capture all the stories and really try to tell it as best as you can in their voice. And yeah. so that's why there's no narrator or anything like that, because <laughs> they're going to tell you their story. And, um, and so, but it was very, very tough to pull uh, stories. You know, you have, and, and I know some of the players that are watching that are going to go, why didn't you put this in? And why didn't we put this in? And, you know, so when you get down to it, you got to figure out what's the theme of this movie and what are what's the overall vision, the mo the the direction we want to go with it, and you kind of go on that direction. And you'll have some crazy stories, and you want to put them in, but they don't build to the bigger story. Um, they're great uh, side pieces, but they're not strong enough to kind of build. Do they? That what? Where does that connect to what you're going to watch next? So, so that was the stuff that you tend to pull and it, it was really tough because there's some great, great stories in there from um, different hazing techniques that they did on the guys. To, <laughs> just, I really <laughs> wanted to see that. Not going to lie. I, I wanted yeah. to know, like, did they, did they beat the shit out of each other with like <laughs> with soap? you know, in the sock, you know, like, like red, oh, code red, <laughs> they duct tape them to a chair and like, I don't know, do unforeseen things with their genitals or anything like that. You know, there could be a, a plethora of things that happen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one and, um, oh, I'll yes. tell you guys one. And, um, <laughs> I haven't told this on to anybody cause, and when I told Scott Frost, this story got told, he goes, wait, they told you that? Like <laughs> that one's not supposed to come out. So they had a thing called girthing and it was on whenever their birth, whoever's birthday was, and this was the defensive line. So you got Christian Peter, you got Jace Peter, you got, you know, the, the, cra the crazies of the bunch. And um, they would hold the guy down on their birthday and pull up their, their shirt. And so their stomach is exposed and they'd spit and do everything on their stomach. And then they rub their, and then they take another player and rub their, or I'm sorry, let me, I, I had that wrong. They would, one of the players, one of the defensive linemen would lay down with their stomach exposed and they put all <laughs> kinds of, you know, whatever they wanted to put on their stomach. And then the whoever's birthday it was, they'd take their face and smear it all into that person's stomach. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> Christian Peter's birthday, they thought it would be funny if someone decided to, you know, ump the, up the ante from you know, spit and loogies to, you can imagine. And it wasn't, it wasn't dog stuff. It was human, human stuff. Oh, <laughs> and, oh yeah, that. wow. 
Here's shit in your eye, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Very easy way to get pink eye, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. Oh, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, oh. you heard it here first. <laughs> Whew. Scott I've Frost, always wondered about he's that. been fired. <laughs> I've right? always wondered about that because I was – I. I don't mean to sidetrack here, but I was in the Marine Corps and there was some things that we did that I won't talk about. Um, mm -hmm. I was luckily, I never got the receiving end of it, surprisingly, aside from just regular initiation type things. And and those weren't that bad in comparison to what what we would do sometimes. But yeah, there's some there's some crazy stories. And I was like, a football team is no different. They're pretty militaristic with with their initiations and their their hazing and all that stuff. And and so, but that that definitely goes out of my scope of imagination. I <laughs> I that is something I would have never thought of. So, uh, yeah, that is awesome. I am that, so that glad that I somehow walked into that. Yeah, the the <laughs> crazy thing with that is like, and and Scott kind of talks talked to me about it after the interview, but. You know, it's um that stuff they don't really allow anymore. And some of that right. is no. as crazy and sick as it might be, but that's kind of the stuff sometimes you need. Um, oh, so yeah. it's a, it's a different environment. The big thing that he said, he said, you know, I would love to, you know, and he was talking, we were talking about, you know, I, you know, I asked him, are you going to apply some of the things that you guys did back then into practice now and how you guys practice and did these things? And he goes, I can't. The NCAA doesn't allow it anymore. You know, right. I can only have these guys in pads a certain amount and I can't have them hitting each other. He's like, back then when you went to practice, it was, it was on like your, their practices mm -hmm. got to a point where they were more physical and harder than some of their games. So they'd get in the games and be ready to go. And that was a big, big part of that. Team. Was, a lot of people don't know this, but Tom Osborne allowed free reign on the quarterbacks. They didn't have, I think, green jersey. No, that on, crap. Nope. Do the green jersey, but they didn't. Tommy Frazier, all those guys, full on, you know. And, um, yep. And that's built. A, that's with why they were, I think, so tough and built that toughness. But you can't do that now. You know, it's totally different. Yeah, which is why you've seen the advent of like the spread offenses and things like that. So you don't have all that near as much between the tackle and option run and those things where you get a lot of that getting beat up. Right. Um, so speak since you mentioned Scott, which was really kind of the whole animus of why I reached out to, uh, your Twitter account in the first place was with his dismissal this last Sunday, um, and any comments that maybe he would have made about the fan base back when he played on part two of the documentary, what, is that going to affect the final cut on part two at all? No, no, not at all. You know, it cool. was, he speaks directly to his experience during that time um he but he doesn't shy away from even as the head coach he didn't shy away when he was the head coach he was the head coach when we interviewed him he didn't shy away from um talking about the frustrations um from the fans booing him to giving him a hard time to um to then when you know he kind of won the fan base over he also tells some funny stories about, you know, things that probably didn't help him out showing up to Nebraska, getting off the plane and showing up to the <laughs> Stanford Letterman jacket. jacket. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> right there. So, which is great, you know, and he ta talks about it and laughs about it. Um, but yeah. no, I, um, <laughs> we don't, yeah, nothing needs to, it, it, he was very much yeah, massive part of that team and that program. And his story is very, very important. It, you know, whether he was going to be the head coach or was ever a head coach after that time, his story um, was going to be told and we were going to cover it just like we did. And so, um, no, it didn't, doesn't have any effect on a movie two at all. Okay. That's good. That's awesome. I appreciate that. And I'm sure he does too. I think Scott Frost probably being the kind of guy he would, would, is would probably say hey don't cut any of that stuff out it is who i am so you know as as a fan base it for me especially i actually drove to wood river a couple times to watch that guy play um and i was heartbroken as just about every other husker fan was when he decided to go to stanford to play instead of coming to nebraska but once he got here and other than the asu game and the uh first big 12 championship game against texas 
he ran the offense about as be- as good as any quarterback that Nebraska has ever seen. Ron Brown has said as much. Nobody right. ran the Osborne offense better than he did, especially in 1997. So in that light, uh, do you think the number of tickets sold for part two will be affected by the fact that he was fired by maybe a minimum of people who aren't happy that he was fired? Or do you think you'll still probably sell about the same amount just because people want to see what he has to say about playing for the Huskers? Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I would hope that because it's about those specific teams, I think the I think specifically the Nebraska fans are going to want to see see the story behind that team. Hopefully, movie two leaves you really wanting to see and wanting to know what's going to happen next mm-hmm. with, with these guys um, on their journey. So hopefully, not. I don't. You know, it's hard to tell if um, if they would want to not want to watch the movie because of his firing. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. It's interesting. Um, I know, doubt you know, it with films where they're going to go, you know? Right. I doubt right. it. I don't think, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference because I, if I, if I were to try and gauge the climate of Husker football, I don't think that anything about the day by day documentary was primarily motivated by any sort of fascination with Scott Frost. I, I really think it just has to do with the nostalgia and the straight historian aspect of True. that era of Husker football. I know it's not going to make any, any difference in my decision to watch part two. I'm actually right. probably more interested in it now, uh, yeah, which too. is saying something because I was already hundred percent bought and sold waiting, waiting for part two to come out. Um, and especially mm-hmm. now it's like, well, I kind of want to see, I want to see what was Scott Frost. <laughs> and I want to see it as was. soon as possible. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, I want to see what Scott Frost was saying. I want to know what, what his mindset, what his experiences were then yeah. and now and, and his view on the Husker fan base and all that. I'm, I'm very curious, especially postpartum, you know, like he's, he's gone. So, um, yeah, nothing I can do to change that, but the very least I want to owe the guy the respect of, of hearing his story a little bit more and uh, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe shedding some light on some things that I didn't already know about him. So I look forward to it. And he, yeah. he was really cool. You know, I thought being the head coach, he would be very reserved and probably not give us a whole lot. And he was very, very open. He went into pretty much everything, you know, which I was really surprised and happy that he was, well, to, to well, the, you know us. what, though, that's not a surprise because there's an awful lot of people in media that have said that other than injuries and opening practice, he's always been an open book. And it's usually as a head coach, it was just, it was to his detriment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit too honest sometimes, <laughs> sometimes a little too forthright. No doubt about it. And speaking of sooner rather than later, um, <clears throat> what do you think a release general idea of when the release date for part two will be was it going to be after the season sometime during the season maybe next spring early summer like part one yeah definitely um so we, on this one we're getting a lot of attention and so there might be a a national theatrical release that's going to happen um now whether it'll go it'll it'll go into theaters over a thousand theaters that's looking like across the country. nice dude the second one so that'll be and so it'll really determine like when the theaters are going to open it up to do that um but yeah we're pushing really hard to have this one coming out really quick i mean it would be great if we could we could release it during the holidays during that break ideally if i if i were to pick a time it would be right after you know the big 12 you know, the big, the big champion, the conference championships and into the Bulls. So that like two week period, right? That there. two, three week period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes right sense. There, that would be perfect. So that would be ideal. I don't know if we'll be able to get it out that soon as far as just the distribution side of it. The movie will be done, but but just the distribution side. So but I would think cool. no one's going to wait past, you know, this spring. That would be really long. I don't. I don't think anybody wants to wait that long for it to come out. So <laughs> we're definitely trying to get it out before spring. Very cool. Well, dude, that's a, really about all we had for you tonight. Unless Scott, you had anything else you thought of you wanted to ask? Uh, no, no. Other than just uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on our podcast and 
talking about especially some unexpected details like that was a that was a really good gem you threw in there um yeah gem yeah we'll call it a gem yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh my goodness oh my goodness do you want to hang out with us justin you're more than welcome to you know i got some little kids i gotta put to bed but I, otherwise i would right, love dude. to you guys i really appreciate you guys having me on it's been a lot of fun and sorry for the the technical issues earlier it's all oh, good, okay. buddy. All that matters is that the information got out there, and information is the most important thing. So we really appreciate your time, man. God bless, and we hope that this uh, part two exceeds all the expectations that you have for it, because uh, part one certainly exceeded mine, and I cannot wait for part two to come out. Thank Agreed. you, guys. I really all appreciate right, it, and take care. All right, buddy. Hey, you Talk too, to you some other time. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.